Hello everyone! It's a little bit of Muppets for you there. Uh, this week has been uh, frustrating on the sewing front. Um, so I'm going to give you a really brief update on what I've done because it's not a lot. And then I'm going to show you a little um, tutorial style um, video so that you can learn something at least, given that my week has been so atrociously bad in terms of getting things done. Um, I was in the studio yesterday and decided I should really spend some time on my dress, the one that I twirled up about two weeks ago in the yellow and then wanted to change the skirt off. You may remember that I said in a previous video that I wanted to do something along the lines of this, which is a, um, it's hard to see, um, which is a fold over peplum skirt put on the bottom, which I still love. I have not fallen out of love with this. It is a wonderful thing. But on looking at the dress, I just thought, it's going to be too square again. The top act, the top of the dress is very curvy. So it's got a curved sweetheart neckline. It's got a curved yoke seam. It's just all over curvy. And when it's on, it's, it looks particularly curvy. So I thought, mm, if I put something straight on the bottom, I think it's going to look weird. So what I decided to do instead is go with this one. Um, which is a, you may not be able to see very well on this because it's gone a bit crazy with the white balance, but um, is a tulip skirt, but a bias cut tulip skirt, which looks much more like a tulip. So rather than being um, a solid skirt with pleats at the top, it's split down the front on an angle. So it almost looks like an upside down tulip. Maybe that's where the name comes from. It's a possibility. Uh, so I decided to try that. So I went to the studio yesterday and here on my Ooh, this is hard. My right. Your right. No, it's your right. Ooh, I haven't had to do mirror related relevance. Anyway, here <laughs> you'll be able to see uh, the first thing I did, which was just to cut out a panel for the skirt and pin it roughly to my twirl to see whether it was going to work and whether the thing that was in my head was really going to translate. And I thought it was fine and actually probably might be all right. So I went ahead and decided to sew the rest of it up. I had some white polyester around, which I got for a different project and therefore decided I would use just to try something different and see how it would look in a more drapey fabric. I'm thinking I'm going to make it in a really beautiful wool crepe that I bought, which is probably halfway between the two. It's much heavier, obviously, than the polyester, but it does have a drape to it. So I just thought, I'll try it, see how it looks. And I did that. So this is what I ended up with. Um, I don't know what happened to the fit. Um, I changed the fitting very slightly. I, I opened up the front centre seam a bit across the bust because it was a bit too tight on me. And I raised the yoke under the bust by a quarter of an inch because it was too low. However, on this version, it is now even lower than it was before. Not entirely sure how that happened. And I, the, it just, it's got, well, you can see it's sort of a mess. Part of it will be the fabric. I do appreciate this is drapey, shifty fabric, and I did do it in a rush, so I'm not giving up entirely on my pattern drafting ability, but I said I'd show you warts and all, and... Warty. Warty. Um, yeah, but the skirt's okay. I mean, it's not perfect, and it still needs work, and it's not hanging properly yet, but the, the idea, I can see it's got potential. It has a sort of flower fairy vibe going on, which I'm loving. So... I'm going to persevere, we'll get there, but I don't currently have a final item to show you. Um, so what I thought I would do is share with you a little tutorial that I videoed um, when I was doing my skirt, which is about how to do continuous bias binding. It's a technique that many of you may well know. If you've ever quilted, the likelihood is you've found it because you have to do so much bias binding and quilting to bind off your quilts. Anything that makes it quicker, quite frankly. Um, but I love it and I use it all the time. So I, you, from this you can, from a nine inch square piece of fabric, you can get about a metre and a half of bias binding out of it and you only need to sew two seams. So here it is. So the first thing you will need is a square of fabric. Um, I used one that was nine inches square. You can go as big as you like. I happen to have this left from a project I had done before. You pop it down on your board and you want to divide it in half across the diagonal into two right angle triangles. Alexa, um, place your triangles, one right sides together, 
with the straight edges connecting and with this nice v-shape at the top you want to make sure that any pattern in your fabric is in the right direction and then you want to sew along that seam <coughs> narrow seam. Once you've done that you will end up with a parallelogram um, with a seam running down the middle. If you turn that onto its back you can then mark one inch wide lines up the long axis of your parallelogram. Don't do it the other way, it doesn't work. This is to make half inch bias binding incidentally. If you want to make wider bias binding, then you want to make sure that you do wider lines. If you want an inch, then I would suggest you do two inch wide or inch and a half wide ones. You then want to fold your parallelogram in half right sides together so that your diagonal edges meet a like this. And then you offset the lines so that your top line sticks out over the edge as does your bottom line. And you want to line up all of your other lines along that middle seam and sew it together. So you end up with a continuous loop which um, has a diagonal seam running down the middle. I'm just marking all of my lines back in again because I was using a uh, pen which disappears when you iron things, which was helpful. Once you have done that, you just start at the end where you're overlapping, take a pair of scissors and cut along your lines in a single layer, don't go through both layers of your fabric, to cut off your bias strips you will find that your lines magically c create a continuous loop all the way around this particular piece of fabric, meaning that you end up with one long strip. And if you carry on, you will find yourself with around about a metre and a half of bias tape. You've sewn two seams. You're feeling like a winner. Then, if you have a bias tape maker, which is what this little thing is, you can thread your bias tape through your bias tape maker. You could, of course, do it without one, but they cost a couple of pounds, so I would recommend getting one if you're going to be making a lot, because otherwise you might drive yourself insane. Um, and when you do that, what it does is fold over the two edges so you can make double um, fold bias tape very easily. Take that to your iron, press it, and you will end up with a metre and a half of double fold bias tape. Simple. So, I hope your sewing weeks have been more successful than mine. I hope your non-sewing weeks have been successful. Darn it, I just hope you're being successful. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing because I don't mean it. I'm laughing because it's a silly thing to say. Uh, and I will see you next week, hopefully, with some slightly more successful showing. Sh show, showing to share. Show, showing, showing. <laughs>